be glad. My name is Reverend Stacy Edwards Dunn, and I serve here at McCormick as Director of African American Ministry and Black Church Studies. And we are pleased that you have taken time out of your schedule to be here with us on this, what we think is also a very historical day uh, for this interview that will occur today. So we say thank you so much for being here with us. And at this time, I want to introduce you to the president, president of the Corbett Theological Seminary, uh, President David Crawford. Welcome, friends, on behalf of our board chair, Pete Cochran, our vice chair, Connie Lindsay, our board, our amazing faculty, students, and staff, it is my great honor to welcome you all here to the Cormac Theological Seminary. I also want to offer a special welcome to our good friend, Reverend Dr. B. Herbert Martin, and to Reverend Dr. Jeanette Wilson, two good friends of McCormick. Events <laughs> don't just happen, there are an awful lot of hands and effort that goes into it. I especially want to thank Priscilla Rodriguez, who coordinates all the events for our centers. Thank you, Priscilla, for wherever you are, probably out working. <laughs> Thanks someone we all know and love. Um, there are not enough superlatives to describe all that she is and all that she does, but please join me in showing our appreciation to Reverend Dr. Stacey Edwards. <laughs> Friends, it's now my honor to introduce the first of our two very special guests, the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III. <laughs> Pastor of Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago. <laughs> Dr. Moss has built his ministry on a foundation of the church. Dr. Moss has uh, built his ministry on a foundation of community advancement and social justice activism. And has spent the last two decades practicing and preaching a black theology that is unapologetically calling attention to the problems of mass incarceration, environmental justice, and economic inequality. He's part of a new generation of this, committed to preaching a prophetic message of love and justice that he believes are inseparable companions from the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was recently recognized as one of the 12 most effective preachers in the English-speaking world by well, Baylor yeah. University's Truett Theological Center. <laughs> and has received numerous other awards and honors, including a 2016 NAACP Imagery Award. A native of Cleveland, Ohio, Dr. Moss is an honors graduate of Morehouse College, who <laughs> earned his Master of Divinity from Yale Divinity School, and his Doctor of Ministry degree from a school down the street, Chicago <laughs> <laughs> He returned to Yale in 2014 to present the famed Lyman Beecher Lectures. As a historical note, Lyman Beecher was the first president of Lane Seminary in Cincinnati, Ohio. And during the Great Depression, when they were struggling, they emerged into the McCormick Theological Seminary. <coughs> Dr. Moss's lectures, which demonstrated a homiletic blueprint for prophetic preaching in the 21st century, were the foundation of his latest book, Blue Note Preaching in a Post-Soul World, Finding Hope in an Age of Despair, published in 2015. His sermons, articles, and poetry have appeared in countless national publications and media outlets. <coughs> Dr. Moss is an ordained minister in the Progressive National Baptist Convention and the United Church of Christ. He serves on the board of Auburn Seminary and the Faith in Place Action Fund. He also serves as chaplain of the Children's Defense Fund Samuel DeWitt Proctor Child Advocacy Conference. Dr. Moss and his wife Monica are the proud parents of two creative and beautiful children, Elijah Winton and Michaela Elon. Friends, please join me in warmly welcoming Robert Phillips.
Now it is indeed my honor and my privilege to introduce to you the Reverend Jesse L. Jackson, Sr. The Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson, Sr., founder and president of the Rainbow Push Coalition, is one of the foremost civil rights, religious, and political figures of our time. For nearly 50 years, he has played a pivotal role in virtually every movement for peace, civil rights, empowerment, gender equality, and economic and social justice the world over. A testament to the breadth and the depth of his works can be best expressed by two of the greatest honors he has received. In 2000, President Bill Clinton awarded the nation's highest civilian honor the Presidential Medal of Freedom to Reverend Jackson. And in 2013, the South African government bestowed upon him their highest civilian honor, the National Order, the Companions of O.R. Tambu. Reverend Jackson has been called the conscious of the nation and the great unifier, challenging America to be inclusive and to establish just and humane priorities for the benefit of all. He is known for bringing people together on common ground across lines of race, faith, gender, culture, and class. Born in October 8, 1981 in Greensville, South Carolina, Reverend Jackson was a standout student athlete who graduated from the public school in Greensville, who after turning down a contract to play baseball for the Chicago White Sox, enrolled in Big Ten football powerhouse, the University of Illinois, on a football scholarship. He later transferred to North Carolina A&T University and graduated in 1964. He then accepted the Rockefeller Foundation Scholarship to pursue his theological studies at the University of Chicago, Chicago Theological Seminary, deferring the completion of his master's degree one semester shy of his graduation to begin working full time for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Ordained to the ministry on June 30th, 1968 by Reverend Clay Evans, he eventually earned his master's, degree, master's of divinity degree from the Chicago Theological Seminary in 2000. For his work in human and civil rights and nonviolent non social change, Reverend Jackson has received more than 40 honorary doctorate degrees and frequently lectures at major universities and colleges, including Howard, Yale, Princeton, Morehouse, Harvard, the University, uh, University in South Africa, Columbia, Stanford, and Hampton. He was made an honorary fellow of Regents Park College at Oxford University and received an honorary fellowship from Edge Hill University in Liverpool, England. In March 2010, Reverend Jackson was inducted into England's prestigious Cambridge Union Society. Reverend Jackson began his activism as a student in the summer of 1960, seeking to desegregate, des desegregate the local public library in Greenville, and then as a leader in, co in college sit-in movement while as stu a student at North Carolina a and State University. In 1965, he became a full-time organizer for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and was soon thereafter appointed by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to direct the Operation Bread Basket <coughs> Program. In 1971, Reverend Jackson founded Operation Push, People United to Serve Humanity in Chicago. The goals of Operation Push were economic empowerment and expanding educational, business, and employment opportunities for the disadvantaged and people of color. In 1984, Reverend Jackson founded the National Rainbow, Spoke, uh, Rainbow Coalition, a social justice organization based in D.C., devoted to political empowerment, education, and changing public policy. In 1996, the Rainbow Coalition and Operation Push merged to form Rainbow Push Coalition to continue the work of both organizations and to maximize resources. Long before national health care, war on drugs, direct peace negotiations, between Palestinians and Israelis, ending apartheid in South Africa and advancing democracy in Haiti became accepted public policy positions. Reverend Jesse Jackson, he advocated for them. Reverend Jackson's advocacy on these and other issues helped bring the American public 
to a new level of consciousness. Reverend Jackson's two presidential campaigns broke new ground in yeah. U.S. politics. His 1984 campaign registered over one million new voters, won 3.5 million votes, and helped the Democratic Party regain control of the Senate in 1986. campaign registered over 2 million new voters, yeah. won 7 million votes, and helped boost hundreds of states and local elected officials into office. Additionally, he won historic victories, coming in first or second in 46 out of 54 primary contests. His clear progressive agenda and his ability to build an unprecedented coalitions inspired millions to join the political process. In 1991, Jason Jackson was elected senator of Washington, D.C., advocating for statehood for the nation's capital and advancing the rainbow agenda at the national and international levels. Since then, he has continued to promote voter registration and lead get out the vote campaigns, believing that everyone should be encouraged to be responsible, informed, and an active voter. He has spearheaded major organizing tours through the Appalachia, Mississippi, California, and Georgia. He has continued to be a leading advocate for a variety of public policy issues, including universal health care, equal administration of justice in all communities, sufficient funding for enforcement of civil law, rights laws, and for increased attention to business investment in underserved domestic in, um, communities. Reverend Jackson also supports a broad range of policies to improve education, eliminate poverty, and remind everyone that we are one big tent America with room for all and none left in the margins. A current campaign is restructure loans, don't foreclose on homes, tackling today's housing crises and economic crises gripping the world. As a highly respected and trusted world leader, Reverend Jackson has acted many times as an international diplomat on sensitive situations. For example, in 1984, Reverend Jackson secured the release of captured Navy Lieutenant Robert Goodman from Syria and the release of 46 Cuban and Cuban American prisoners in Cuba. He was the first American to bring home citizens from the UK, France, and other countries hailed as human shields by Saddam Hussein in Kuwait and Iraq in 1990. In 1999, Reverend Jackson negotiated the release of US soldiers held hostage in Kosovo. In August 2000, Reverend Jackson helped negotiate the release of four journalists working on a documentary for Britain's Channel 4 network in Liberia. He, tra he has traveled extensively in the Middle East and Asia, and he was a special guest of President Fernando Cardoso of Brazil in honoring Zumbi, the leader of slave results that led to, to the end of slavery in Brazil. I'm sure Pastor Moss, Dr. Otis Moss III, is going to share more and interview him so that he can draw more out of Reverend Jack, Jesse Jackson, Jr. But we are excited and ecstatic, hippopotamus happy that he is <laughs> in this space, and we welcome them now to come forward so that we might experience
Well, first, I want to uh, thank the McCormick family for, for this opportunity uh, to interview an icon and a giant in our community and across uh, this nation in Reverend Jesse Jackson. It is a blessing and a deep honor to have this opportunity. Uh, President Carver, we thank you so very much for your leadership and what you're doing for 190 years. Urban seminary education, recognizing that uh, it cannot be solely something that is for the privileged few, uh, but we make a deep commitment to the community. And we thank you for that leadership and continuing this leadership. And this kind of program and platform uh, speaks volumes to your leadership. So we thank you. We have, without a doubt, one of the great world leaders, uh, none other than Reverend Jesse Jackson. It is, it is really a privilege on so many levels for myself to have this opportunity because I have been hanging around Reverend Jackson since I was about two years old. Um, and so to have this opportunity, I must say this also, he helped me graduate from high school. Uh, how did he help me graduate from high school? I was taking a government class, uh, and in that government class, uh, we were studying somebody who was running for president by the name of Reverend Jesse Jackson. Uh, he came to uh, Cleveland, stopped by Shaker Heights High School, uh, and I had the opportunity to uh, board the bus as you were going around Cleveland and interview you at that time. I got an A on my paper. <laughs> conversation, uh, Reverend Jackson, uh, because many people do not know in terms of your origins. Uh, as was mentioned uh, by Reverend Dr. Stacey, it was done, uh, that you are from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, that is where the origins uh, start for you. And then you made your way to the University of Illinois. The first thing I have to ask is, what position did you play in football? And also, what was position in baseball? Quarterback. Football. Quarterback. Christian baseball played first base. Mathematics proved before we saw a Dr. Grace Kim, the foremost Asian American healer in America today, is our special guest. We can do some right. Dr. Kim, please stand.
June. In December, there were 15 <coughs> Reverend James Hall led a demonstration on the Air Carolina Airport that Jack Robinson could not sit in this place. While they were doing that, we considering it in Nashville with John Lewis and Beverly Magnum, and it happened February 1st in North Carolina, like a pregnant moment in time. That summer I came home, and the seventh class was a month to life. We were arrested. I could never feel a few work about that. I must say, because Reverend Hall, Reverend James Hall, led the demonstration the first of January, so that they may curse you, ignore them. They call you naked, ignore them. Call you out your name, ignore them. Say, but you're going to get arrested, so you can create crisis. Okay. So we watched, watched by the block, a mile down the road, and the police showed up. So well, lawyers are talk police. Said. Uh, Count of three, you're going to jail. One, two, we hit it. <laughs> the road back to church. Reverend mm -hmm. Hall said, Why are you back? You're going to arrest us. Hell, that's five centuries. Get arrested. <laughs> we did it. I don't feel like I can brag about that. I went to jail for seven people out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I lost my fear yeah. of death in jail cell that day. to Illinois, but then you transfer to 
North Carolina a &T. And you had the opportunity to meet a gentleman by the name of Dr. Samuel DeWitt Clark uh, while you were at North Carolina a &T. What was that experience like when you met Dr. Clark? He was your president. He was. 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 I couldn't attend Clemson. Mm -hmm. So Furman, Furman was the school. Furman was the great girl. And Bob Jones oh, University was the other one. And Bob Jones, African students could attend that didn't date white girls. The African Americans in Greenville couldn't attend Bob Jones. And so I, I was going to Clemson of uh, uh, Furman, but we were ineligible with my race since then. The next year, the hobby began with the Clemson unarmed guard. The next year, Arthur Luce was Alabama unarmed guard. The way we really went to Illinois because Big Ten was prestigious. It was a long way from home. And I, and I couldn't go to schools close to home. One of the things happened when you see Clemson play Alabama in the big game, those guys would have been in the Big Ten school. Uh, Bubba Smith, all the big, uh, all Americans from, from these schools really came to the Big Ten, Ohio State, and all of that. They, they were the only shooter, Alabama, and Georgia. And th th that changed the whole complexion. The drill that caused that bad. So, but I got the sense that after I've been treated like a train out, mm -hmm. there was something about it. There was not a single black professor on campus. On the board, we knew that there was an administrative office. It was in the conditioning process. One professor said one day, he said, Now, the best color boy in America at this school is the very first school. If you hang with them, you'll be all right. Yes, sir. And so the other guys kind of laughed. I didn't feel good about that in my son's experience. A woman named Mrs. King, Mrs. DeChester, she would say, That was my father's, my grandfather's mom. It to be the darkest. They had to come back to the dog and laugh about that. Yes, you think it was funny. You know, now here we are, 1960, fully civil rights, having a justice back of us. We were almost insult proof. And uh, we couldn't swim. The swimming coach said that I ankles were too big because we could not be good swimmers. That stuff was taught all in many ways throughout the school. So I, I felt congested by I, I walked across the city one day. I said, think fast. I, my quarter said, you have good hands. You're in. So my quarterback days was over. So I said, okay. That fall I came, that summer I came home from school. And, the, and I was sitting along with my loose blue jacket on and my little one, my big ten stuff. And the bus pulled into Nashville and that fist. Tennessee State Cry Corner. They were in school and had fun at the same time. They were by themselves. Going down to Atlanta with it. It was crazy. So I'm going home next year. <laughs> so I went back to North Carolina. I, I don't know how I got in. Yeah, see, I was not eligible to play that year. My parents didn't have fun so much to play football. I lived and learned Dr. Proctor saw me. Uh, he met with me. He said he let me in on promise. Mm. So I got to get to him. Many of our schools have gone backwards, but they had students who they knew who had the right stuff. They let them stand in the house. Mm -hmm. So those who may not be familiar with Dr. Proctor, if you want to share. Dr. Sam Proctor was a bit of the Virginia Union. I just want Virginia Union University uh, president. Uh, PhD in philosophy uh, of theolo education, Boston U. Mm -hmm. He met the Dr. King somewhat. Uh, proud speaker and writer. The first year I came to the president of North Carolina A&T, he had to pick him out to go to uh, Niger to head of Peace Corps. He was swinging with Kennedy, he took that guy away. He was such a profound speaker. He used to have that on Saturday night had that with the uh, best for service. He was at the people had to take roll call, make sure you could come to Vespa. That was mandatory. Dr. Proctor came in to get tickets, bring a girlfriend, do it. 
Yeah, a lot to say. said very well. <laughs> you love the game past it, Abyssinia. I was trapped between going to law school or seminary. I wanted to go to law school because when they were going to the jail, some lawyers argued our case and made the case and got us out. Minister, I knew a lot of them confined to piety, and that was the power. My father was standing the world. So, the ministry didn't make sense to me for what I wanted to do. I probably said, no, 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 the seminary is broader than law school. A lawyer's work is limited to law. You get, get, get the 66 books, the law, poetry, get all that. So he convinced me to come and see this, to try it out. And I got there within a few days, I know I was home. And so I was, I was still to see it here. I was really trapped because Dr. Proctor, he knew I was going to UNC, a Duke to law school. So I wanted to come to the office and Dr. Moore, the dean, and Dr. Uh, A. Knight Stanley, student mm -hmm. president at that time, youth president, and uh, dean. And I just happened to stop by the office. I was full scholarship to CTS. And it worked out for us. That's what happened. Now, you also, uh, while you were CTS, you brought a group of students down to Selma, Alabama, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. We were trying to find a way <clears throat> in some form of activism on the campus. Dr. King, he was perhaps coming north after Selma. It's the first place ever we saw black ministers have a press conference. <coughs> so we were going to need you here. Uh, the black people politically just had a uh, meeting over at St. James Church. Don't need you here. The minister on the west side of the church is about one fifth the size of the people in here. The Dr. King should go to hell. He made all three networks that night. Yeah. So we, we prepared to do something. Well, I really came with here ultimately so I could get away from the South for a few years to get my education, go back home and get the church and be social activist. But the Sunday I was watching news and the, and the bridge beating took place. Now the king was in, was in his pulpit when that took place. He was not in cell either. He said he wanted people to come. So I woke up all night. And uh, the next morning, I got, went down and to, to the cafeteria and I got on the table and said, it's summertime time and it's a measure of your faith and your religion and your depth. You make A's and your books and flunk in this, you don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Went across the street in the, in the chapel and began to uh, learn. So I read a lot of my life my stuff, I from not feel. And I came back, and so three bus, three columns of us went to the cell. Here in the they gave Wallace, we went to the cell and made me a witness. And that's why when I got there, Dr. Shaw, my president, tried to accomplish very able peace activist. So you guys should not come to sell me because you have to finish your work. We said, okay. He was a human that we went that way. We got to the first person we saw was him. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was a, it was a, it was a happy reunion. And that's when that night when I walked into the church, Dr. King asked me to interpret for the seminary students around the country. Over to that. And he was like, asked me to do it. I didn't know him at that time. And then we later hooked up and in the plenty of staff. Now there were two other people that you met, I believe, in that time period. You met Reverend James Orange and also Reverend James Bevel. They were also organizing in some at that time. <coughs> Sometimes we speak in the scripture and the scripture about and the crowd stood there. The crowd. Sometimes there are jewels in those crowds. Uh, they, the crowd they just don't have a name. Everybody in that crowd is somebody. In, in, in the individuation, you must sometimes pick the crowd apart from where that crowd came from, what made the crowd become a crowd. And so James was one of those people who had a low profile in the sense because he was not a very literate guy in the former system of education. He had the, he had the, the fact that, that, that Paul missed, I'm convinced, was the faith over love of these three, grace of grace love. I think Paul missing one. He missing courage. 
Do you have faith on that love on which you feed the water? Yes, you have courage. You can put faith, set the water's edge, hope, and love. Without courage, you're not going to go into deep water. And James had that X factor. James was in the dark and cell, aggressively to go. And a guy named Jim Lee Jackson, soldier came home. Soldier came home, and his grandmother was being attacked downstairs in the gap that they were upstairs. He went downstairs to defend her, and the police killed him. So the women, the crowd again, said, We're going to take his body. A soldier, we're going to march from here to march around with his body. They convinced him to take it to sell them. But then by the king arrived. And out of many of the details that the seven of Montgomery was born, it really happened in Green County. Mm -hmm. Seven of them is in Dallas County. Mm -hmm. James Orange was in the middle of that, could have been killed. Him, so he was processing. That's the James Orange type. Freedom fighter. And he was also a street organizer. Uh, and he was really, yeah, street organizer. Uh, and, and in time, he became better known by virtue of his talents and his, and his courage. When South Africa is the work done, they named the school of South Africa James Gordon in South Africa. One of the real stars of Dr. King's uh, galaxy. James Pepper was, hard to describe Pepper. Pepper was a, a creative genius. He just, in some sense, he needed the discipline of a school like this. And a school like this need his courage. Mm. He was a guy who had, Dr. King said, Bevel, with his creativity, he was going to get some systematic training. You couldn't be stopped at it. You need some combination of charismatic and systematic. Some combination of acting and knowing to act on and why. Uh, creativity and structure. Those dynamic times so together. Bevel, when we live in Birmingham, and the minister kind of recall. Went around to school, preaching to the students. He mobilized the students to march downtown. Well, students came, both the students, their parents came to defend their children. The minister came to look at the parents, members of the churches. So it kind of children, <coughs> parents, preachers, and others, and that and the dog fighting me with the drama. That's interesting about the movement because the drum was in Birmingham, A, because Bull Connor became a symbol of uh, degradation and racism. Now the king was there. But there were more marches in North Carolina. There were little black colleges in HBCUs in North Carolina. John C. Smith, A.T., Fayetteville, and the Central Hall in North Carolina. But the lights really were in, in Birmingham. And Rebel organized, and at some point in time, well, they're reading the map, should they come north or not? Bevel of the seven have been moved to uh, Chicago, on the west side. Now, the king of the get away. Bernard Lafayette left the seven here in Chicago. So, as I was making up his mind, the seven have been moving this direction. Now, also, you had Bevel, you had James Orange, but there was another person who was, was an elder for, for me. Uh, Septima Clark. Um, what was the relationship that you had with Septima Clark? Um, was out of Charleston, South Carolina. She's one of the old solid citizens who was um, high level folks who mm -hmm. kind of peace activist, kind of uh, uh, American Friends Service Committee, kind of understanding the peace world, not just on private ghetto type thing. And she became just a stalwart of, 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 of a resource of wisdom. And Dr. King leaned the money very, very heavily. He was always in that crowd, some seven o'clock, some kind of little hammer, always some uh, Dr. Height, some women in that crowd who laid the predicate for all we did. Dr. King was not going to sell. So that could happen. So it was a little small little town. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Boynton, Daisy Boynton, who lived in Selma, whose home, Brother Washington, his wife, Mrs. Bishop, when they were just speaking, she knew Dr. King and met him on occasions. At Christmas time, she came over to the door to the lab. 
to his house in the woods. Well, he had to come to sell it. And Stick was there having said that. But they didn't have the rabbit's office. She put a letter up to King's hand. That, that letter is now in the, uh, the roadside of the historical trail with the Selma and the Selma and uh, Montgomery at this point. She's the reason why Dr. King came to Chicago because she had, she was head of Dallas County, supposedly she had the, the stuff that went with being supported. She also, uh, the son of the Dean took place by, by Jane, by Jane, by Bevel, uh, while Jose Williams and John Lewis got the beating, credit as it were. There's a picture of her with a dress up being beaten. She was in that march too. Because that was Jane Bevel, I mean, that was John, John Lewis, and that was Jose, and that was the crowd. I keep coming back to you, there's a lot of stuff in that crowd. Yeah. Don't, don't underestimate the collective intelligence of that crowd, who's in that crowd. <coughs> Who who saw it may be the one you need to talk to see him. You just never know. So don't, don't take the crowd for granted. I want to fast forward a little bit. I, I heard you tell a story years ago at the uh, Progressive National Baptist Convention. I'll move forward to, to Chicago. You talked about the movement moving to Chicago in 66. And I want to clear up a myth. One, uh, there is, it seems that many ministers are trying to say that they were part of the movement in Chicago, but most were not. Um, and one particular opposition uh, leader that you all <coughs> dealt with was J.H. Jackson. And I was wondering if you could share, you shared a story of visiting J.H. Jackson's church, uh, yourself, and I believe it was Dr. King and a few others, um, and the opposition uh, that you had with J.H. Jackson, and eventually how J.H. Jackson um, didn't necessarily support the movement, but um, uh, that there was a shift in those who are strongly supportive of a much more conservative. Fake news. Dr. King became a school college. But 
until he become president. He deserved it. Jason was trapped the president for 27 years. All we know today is that he was president. God, that was Uber. He was that 27 years. That's all we know about it. He built, he built it as a, as a white statue of him. And, and that he built it. He had built it. And the new pastor took it down. So. <laughs> but a very persuasive, gifted audience. And sometimes you must watch the content of gifted people. <clears throat> Trump is gifted. You come to your house, Trump will tell you, you're going to stop it. So he has to say. You might be dismissive of what he said when you listen. He's gifted. Mm -hmm. And if you use his gifts wisely, you can reconcile the really sad part. But the, the, the misuse of good gifts is the sin in its own right. He has those kind of gifts. J.H. Had, had, had those kind of gifts. Uh, but, and when Dr. King earned a Nobel Peace Prize, and they started to name his peace of Dr. King, his church was on 400. At that time, South Park. Yeah. Change that address to 33rd Street. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's it. All the way on, on South Park, which is a big deal at that time. Then the South Park King Drive shifted his, his address to 33rd Street side. That's right. He, he was de he devoured by, by his own ability <coughs> to make a big room with other King's heart in his head. Mean spirit. Now, who were the ministers in Chicago who were supportive of the movement? Well, A.D. Jackson lived in the Dr. King's last minute. Uh, lived in Moab's man. He would use his church. Reverend Shelton Hall on the west side. Uh, Reverend Stone, Stone Temple on the west side. It was difficult to get this. Because James Jackson, for one set of reasons, they live for another. Men and ministers were on the city hall payroll. Yeah. Yeah. They paid me on some health commission or some commission, commission $30,000. So, yes, yeah, all they needed to was much of the men that made that much money as pastors as they did on the little thing. But they said ministers who had a need to, one of the ministers went downtown. Uh, March times. Yeah. Then we're done, the ministers gather around daily and start singing. Was daily better across the lawn? Yeah. 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 Was daily better across the lawn? Yeah. You can say, you know, again, challenges. Very good. Preach, sing, 
Yeah. And so, but detached from the struggle for a second. So, I was coming on the highway one Sunday morning, going to church looking for a church. Mm -hmm. Heard them singing, I must tell Jesus. Mm -hmm. And ways few people could ever sing and take it to another level. Mm -hmm. So, harder than we drove to fellowship. And that's what I met real Nick. So, I went back that Monday and said, Oh, damn, you know, Dr. King doesn't have good to preach so well. Just, just a tough time, you know. And uh, I said, What's with you? He said, Yes, and then, well, let me ask you a question. Ma Houston, Dick Griffin, down there picketing about the school. What's all that about? I said, Well, this, you know, they're trying to get public education. Yeah, I don't read nothing about it. I said, Okay. Well, I just, yeah. <laughs> So it felt to me, if I could get him the brown hands on him, all the other stuff, could speak, could talk, think of it, you know this. So, put a long search for him. I said, Dr. King, for the evidence is that guy. And he had not been there that long before. So I went down in Fort Ward, a woman named Miss Eva Corley. She was sitting on her chair. <coughs> With elephantitis beating rats, she couldn't feel it. She beat the rats off her feet. Mm -hmm. Love had Down syndrome. A little kid had Down syndrome. And got done little weeping moments. And we prayed. And we just go from house to house trying to find a problem for him. That's all. I said, Reverend Evans, if you come to the Miss Corliss house, you see Reverend Evans. But I knew what was going to happen. He saw her. He looked to him. He said, You can go to church in your house. I have to come to church. If something happens, something's happening. The mean that when he was going when his getting his baptism in the even college situation, Jerry was on a similar classmate, and David Wallace there taking pictures of it. So they run down the jet took the pictures out of Jet Magazine. Next week Jet Magazine, Chicago must have fight for job and rights and Dr. King. But four or five pictures of Reverend Evans in Jet Magazine. <laughs> got a big deal that time, guys. <laughs> so I said, I, got, I said, Dr. King, you get the sheriff at 2 o'clock Thursday. I told Bernard to leave his, his uh, supporter. I said, uh, call Reverend Evans office at 2. Bernard at 2. So we were sitting in the office. He was counseling. He thought I was in the telephone. And Lucille Loman said, Reverend Evans, telephone. And when I'm a, I'm a counselor, people, you can't be pretty, I'm not counselor. Nothing came to the So, <laughs> Lucille, bang! Cut you there, Dr. King, who? Dr. Martin King. Crying and praying, some of it burning and cursing. But we already 
had rare bass introduced. So maybe grab it to rare bass. Rare bass is just multiply. All got top was just a bad quiet. All that, that, that kind of came out of the uprising of uh, the king's uh, death at that time. But we were, Leon Sullivan, remember Leon Sullivan? Another king, you got public accommodation. You got the right to vote. You know, no, you really can't do a campaign on, on public accommodation. We get, we got many, he did the world worse already. You can't do a bull and ranch campaign. We didn't understand that we could, that we needed to, but he said, but I have a program. But you've got a of power back in the parties. Don't, don't, don't shop where you can't work. That type of thing. He had, he had built progress shopping center in Philadelphia. Uh, he went there and mentioned entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit of medicine. He brought the program to Dr. King in uh, Atlanta. Look at these companies that, that, that can help a bunch of black consumers who won't hire us. So they, they won two of these victories against the day race and stuff like that. He brought it to Chicago. Now, Belmont was on the west side with an open house. I was going to work with Belmont on the west side and, and bring out the Testing urine, children urinate on a, 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 a jar. Take it downtown to find a lead paint in it. That was uh, the, the lead factor. We were post lead. That was the big issue. And then you had the Triple CO joint, the open house part with the school thing. So that was, that was, a, that was the West Side movement in the U.S. and the slums. That was a urine testing of lead paint. And the American Grand Service Committee was happy with that, with that very much. Then that was the uh, Triple Seal, and that was the Red Basket. I had the kind of independent group of medicines. Well, once we got it going, we go to the mail company, and they would tell us what they could not. I said, well, you can have them, we can't work here. Cows can't hold that milk for so long. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the cows can hold that milk. And we uh, were going to make ice cream. And uh, who wants to be rich real fast? One day about 366 East 47th Street, Bush and Smith came to look. Reverend said, uh, all of us need milk, perhaps you need construction, you need build stuff. And so across the street, they built the first national team of 47th Street, Calumet. Then George, John, George, John, Julius Smith said, look, we can't get Julius Smith in the stores in the ghetto. Uh, and there are prisons we can't get sausage in the ghetto schools. Uh, uh, Stewards, we can't get bleach in it. Judge Johnson, we can't get evidence yet in the ghetto stores. And so they, as they came, we would call those uh, spokes in the big the bigger than the bill. So we, we had the given supermarket. Uh, all these all these business people around it because it, it was not just for jobs and drivers. But the products, the entrepreneurial thing. Then we got them where they would put money in the banks over the weekend, make the right to care about money. But you put money in the bank on Saturday night, you, you pick up some money by Monday morning. That type of dynamic was kind of beyond the world the time. And then we went a step further. We said, well, why we couldn't get black by the bank in black banks? Well, because Blacks didn't have confidence in the black banks. Two or three had closed down. They closed down because they wanted to cut. Closed down because uh, uh, they were not properly certain about it. And they closed down. And so we said to Alex Stevenson, you should put money in the black bank. A, we need the capital, but also it, it's credible that the state business money can put your money there. So we can't do it, see, because the, the amount of money is too small. He said, it would be big enough for us to pay taxes, big enough for some of that money. <laughs> and he made an adjustment in the law, because so I put some state money in the black bank. That was again the beginning of the whole process. So these products, most blacks didn't know about it, but they couldn't afford to advertise it. So we were going to meet every Saturday morning at CTS, every Saturday morning. We'd have Joe's Mary Park out sausage and different products. Mm -hmm. So we need to expose this. We got the we got the chain stores 
you're putting it in the Thursday ads to black products. And then they'll begin to bank with the black bank. And that took off. Then the big ads in the black newspaper became a, a serious economic impact. <coughs> now, the other thing that happened was along, along that same line was you need to have to expose them. We went across the seminary across the street. Let's have the expo. We, the expo meant to us a way to show what we had to make. Then we got schools involved to come and see what black, most black folks didn't know black folks had to us, remember all this important thing. Well, Quincy Jones came to town. He was down at uh, Johnson, he wanted to meet me. Bob Johnson brought the push, very fast at the time. So we have a business booth and culture and music. It kind of became the place to come. We did a movie, uh, Save the Children. Marvin Gaye, all of them in that movie, Kick D at that time. You couldn't get out of the that kind of time now because of their own greed and all that stuff. So we, we developed that kind of movement here. We're not just about job, it's a whole. Wall Street now is really is, is a large extension of that movement. And that grew out of the struggle. So then you would go to cities like Cleveland, River Google, or your dad when your dad was in Lincoln Heights, um, and Cincinnati, where River Google was, and other cities. They were interested in very fast, and they were in the civil rights movement per se. Mm -hmm. It's really some tension in the organization because he was a young guy that I think was given the assignment to. And uh, I took him another level. The black newspapers and all that were more interesting covering bread basket than what Dr. Kane was talking about. But they were interested not about their interest in store space, store shelf, mm -hmm. where they belonged up. And on his last speech, and members read that speech the night of uh, the mountaintop speech, he was saying, while well, some of the ministers there were not like, into particularly the garbage workers and the like, he said, now we got what you need. Don't be around big and about big anything. Because this is a black problem. Say that. Uh, we want insurance, we got black insurance companies, we got this. And just what, what's the name of the, uh, the, the, the Coca-Cola and, and, and uh, one, one the bread. He mentioned that in his last speech, some people said that was such a profound shift. It was not the shift that he did say. The king believed fundamentally that he said you make all the black men as you want, unless that's a public policy. For the foundation beneath all the people, it won't work. Right. Now, just suppose I am. It's both man because well you need a, a, a foundation with leaders who's no longer falling off and some people they have money. Class came for two weeks ago they were gonna close Ben College out. Mm -hmm. Ben College needed five million dollars mm -hmm. in this accreditation. Last week nine million dollars in, in five days. Mm -hmm. But they had some money. Now that's that's not something too far happened to state schools. You know, money in a sense can go together with the proper values. That's what happened in that situation. So, Dr. King, so, and, he, and he's right, for example, you could be in Chicago, and Michael Jones, Michael Jordan, and Pippen, and 12 other guys, who made $20 million a piece. It only means something to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean, maybe I'm a black millionaire. If I'm the court, a black millionaire. Everybody. Mm -hmm. What difference does it make to affordable education, health care, jobs? That was Dr. King's point that no matter how many black men that you create, unless you have some foundational policy. So it was, I kind of believe that you had to get that crowd to get this crowd. But it was a healthy discussion about how, how, you, how you move people. You get to find the best interests of some people to get the broad interests of other people. I don't think many people really realize how much you've been involved in black economic power uh, from, from early on. I remember that uh, you had a relationship with a gentleman named Sam Tidmore, um, and along with uh, another gentleman uh, from Pinkney and Perry uh, Insurance, uh, who was uh, your uh, campaign manager. And you assisted a variety of people uh, to receive distributorships for, for COVID, for Anheuser Busch. Well, we had the boycott, um, don't choke on Coke. Then <laughs> 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 become a, a, a formal force to the old country. 
We're in that Coke Cola. That's the main line. They're like five hundred beverage products. Not the number one source of orange growing in the world is Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. All that the South of Latin America, the orange person. The number one employer of black people in Africa is Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. From South Africa to Egypt, every country virtually has a public a, a Coke bottle plant. It means someone has to put in infrastructure pipes, purify the water, buy <coughs> sugar from the local planters, drive from London, Manitoba. So, when so, I mean, you add it all together, you get another, 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 another single company. The highest one, the MTs will management, they go for So, it, it has a dimension. But we pull a couple of them and they have more than like at the time. Subsequently, all that changed. It has changed now. Um, we found that the next step beyond having access to voting is access to capital. Mm -hmm. I, I make the case that four states do not struggle. The first state ends slavery. Second state ends Jim Crow for 5,000 black for the next in 80 years. Third state is the right to vote. We be out of slavery, out of segregation, have the right to go and starve to death. <laughs> not capital. Look, skyline downtown, there's not a single black girl in that skyline. Mm -hmm. and that does, that's, a, that's not a reflection of our intelligence. Capital damage is all. And John Johnson built the 18th story building in which it now been subsequently sold to Columbia University. Mm -hmm. Somebody will turn it into, into uh, apartments for the government. Condos. He wanted to build a, a third story building. And he could rent some out. And, you think he had to have put his own money in. Uh, when uh, Herman Russell in Atlanta, on two or three different bank boards down there and all that, he built the new Pascals and the, the hotel, about a six room hotel, about 20, about 30 yards from the new Atlanta football stadium. He could not get the money from the bank, he was on the board off to build that. So if you land today on an airplane in San Francisco, LA, Memphis, Nashville, Chicago, wherever well, you look at when you're not seeing a single building built by black in any city of America today, not one anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's because we're the free but not equal. Mm -hmm. Which runs me, if I may say it, to another dimension, but I think I hope we don't miss today. Because I found that there's such an interconnection. You came in 1619, this morning here. Year 400. That's their meaning. It's not just another landmark. Rule, mother ancient landmarks, mother parts of shit. 40 years. When I was a little younger, we were all Jack Robson fans. I mean, he was the guy. I mean, the guy was Jack. Joe Lewis was Jack Robson. Joe was not the guy at one time, but Jack played baseball every day. Never said it. We were all baseball fans. A few people thought she was like, play baseball. So, it was the Yankees that Campanella done, look at Matt Jack Robinson. The Yankees are all my team, but somebody beat them every year. Break our hearts. 56, I guess it was. 50, 55. We had Santa Colfax, Jewish guy, and drives them. It was them pitching, the Yankees could not beat us in seven games. We get ready for the showdown with Santa Colfax, he strike out 19 people, something like that. He wouldn't pitch. Well, this is so bold. You're not going to bitch. My, my religion. What kind of religion you got? Said, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, That meant nothing to us at all. Exodus 13, 3. So remember this day. Go up his mighty hand and lift you out of bondage. Yes. That, the Jewish religion is built, built on that verse, really. Mm -hmm. Believe that God heard the cries and the groans. Not the righteous and the saved, but the cries and the groans. Whoever was crying, some people who were half drunk walked the cannon, walked up and some people from religion never left the temple. They were scared. <laughs> you break up the theology on that. people who uh, prefer to use the facility to open them up. 
never marched. Mm -hmm. They just sat down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, 400 years was a big deal for them, measuring. But here we are, 244 years of slavery. Here's what I said that we came with the boat in the same boat now, same boat now. That's trivializing this situation. Mm -hmm. If uh, immigrants came on one ship, passed by the harbor. Yeah. Refugees came on another ship, but none of them were sold at the bar. Mm -hmm. On both sides of the ocean. Yeah. Ours is a unique experience and, 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 and by the set of skin. So no matter how well we do, access means a lot, access, and inheritance means more. We, we, we're trapped by the, by the natural laws yeah. and the cultural laws. Of I think we passed that too fast too, because mm -hmm. <clears throat> look at the complexion in this room. Yes. Three or four generations of parents being raped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The numbers are looking like we look today. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've not unearthed that that around 1900 back to 1619, somewhere between laziness and lack of scholarship, but we got to. Just how are you going to dig all that stuff up? If you say every, every person who came, person who came enslaved, 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 registered, registered sold, sold, sold on somebody's plantation, somebody's and, and they paid taxes, taxes they had benefits, benefits that work. So everybody who came on a slave ship is in some archive in some county today. <clears throat> when you dig it up, when you begin now, 400 years, Jesus talks about David. That's his 47 generation granddad. Thousand years. He didn't have no Google, no Facebook. <laughs> First summer, I said 700 years. No Google, he put him. Mm -hmm. Moses, 2,000 years old, David, put him. The continuity of culture <coughs> and the lineage is a big deal if you yes. got it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You never had it, you never miss it. Yes. It's a big deal. So that for the two and a half years of slavery, a man, a, 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 like the bitch, but you come on, come in and go, take it some sex, you can't scream great, can't stand scream, me too. Mm. But only people can sue. Yes. Mm. Yes. That was a rape. It's called the comfort zone. Yeah. Um, the Dr. Kim had been working a lot in South Korea. We were in South Korea last few months ago. The biggest heroines in South Korea, the women were taken away from Japanese occupation and made sex slaves. Mm. The one of the most famous one died about a month ago, right? Wow. A month ago. Women were taken away and just screwed and sex to death or violated in, in ways. We're so used to it, we were, in our house there's seven people, Jackie and, and five children. All, those, all of us are different complexion. Now the person, the white person has seven people, this out there different complexion. <laughs> <laughs>
trying to get out of that the bastardized children of the readers. We're the same people. We really, really just happen. The bottom of the earth look like us. Except South Africa. Where the same thing happened. And when we, we, we've learned to just, ah, uh, when I see a dog sitting down, a vice can lead, a vice versa, Mary, that's, that's, that's what we do. But these gang collections are the result of a process rape. And the rape don't like to talk about it because it's embarrassing. And the rapists don't want to talk about it because it meant to pay for it. The only chance to meet with us down in uh, Montgomery, the new slave museum, you guys got to go down and see it. And uh, her third uncle, she says, was a state official, his grandmama or something, uh, his granddad or something, was a lawyer, a judge in some of the cases, who made some of the famous Alabama cases. They don't want to bother her. She was uncovering secrets, but who raped whom when? Black History for a month. Your parents, son, and daughter every day. You didn't know what, what kind of daddy you had. The jail one. And there's a reasonable chance that his community, that he leaves you the result of a rape. It, 
it, it, may, it may be that for the masters, mm -hmm. as far as those who got the liberty, the person, mm -hmm. black person, with, with American citizen was that day, mm -hmm. ever. That's how, that's how Exodus 13, 3, that, that's what that day is for us. The, the, uh, we wish, we wish past uh, mastery population. Not only will we free that day, but free to join the, the military and man garrison. It says that if you leave your plantation and some other stuff, you have the right to shoot them. Yeah. You're free. Yeah. Nobody can hold you on the plantation. You can shoot them. You can go and try to find your wife, find your children. It's a big deal. It's just ain't no ordinary day. God put his hand and took you out of bondage. Yeah. You didn't leave it as an instrument. They can reach life's instruments. We died for this proposition. This was no gift from Lincoln. It was, a, it was a mutual deal. We kept the deal. Lincoln got killed. Johnson succeeded him, and they were the deal in 1877. Because our slave master became our segregation masters. Between, between 1880 and 1955, thousand blacks were lynched, plus more violence as adults. Not without one conviction. <coughs> Most blacks came to Chicago and came to New York and filled up here as refugees. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We were running, Dr. Al came up here, Dr. Black came up here in caskets, like a German. They were in the casket, coming north, get across, get across the, that bridge and, 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 into Memphis. So uh, all I'm saying is that this thing is pretty heavy. But we can't, we of all people can't just like run first past it. So you, you, Jim Crow. But the king began to emerge at the latter end of that. 54, the law broke the back of the fifth of the sixth of the uh, 1896 decision. 55, Bruce Box emerges. And Ms. Box goes Box, why didn't you go to the back of the city? You could have got beaten or kicked off the city. She said, Well, I, I wanted I said, she, I thought about getting off, I thought about that until I couldn't go back. He spoke to her from the grave. To go back. Now the king came out of that struggle, out of that woman's struggle. She birthed him in that yeah. woman's struggle. Another one in the crowd, one of the people in the crowd. Uh, once we got the, got the right to vote, put this way, if you, if you jump from the top and you hit the bottom, Son of Bottoms to Foundation. He said, Bottom, that's where you end up. Foundation, foundation. foundation. where you start from. With the foundation of America. Not the bottom. Yeah, the bottom. With the foundation. This is this, this gives some language yes. It's no longer no our ancestors, our ancestors. Our called slaves. Our, our ancestors. ancestors. Our ancestors. Our ancestors. How many of you have been to your grandparents raise your hand? Your new grandparents. Yeah, new great grandparents. Great great. Great great great. Now, here, here, here we are in the limited age. Jesus can talk about for who we get the five and stop. He says something about about this about the depth of continuity. Uh, 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 Father God who bowed the child to death. I think he said something about that. And so, uh, we've got to write the book that the minute, the minute, say when the foundation shakes, everything moves. Everything moves. Put the house and a strong storm come along, the third story, folk in the penthouse in trouble. Was <laughs> 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 There's earthquake, everybody's in trouble, right? Yeah. When the foundation shakes, everybody's in trouble. Yeah. Just a strong wind. Now, I'm going with the hills up, hills up, hills When we moved with the right to vote in 65, by women concerned with Jersey in the South, ATOs during Vietnam couldn't, couldn't vote. Couldn't vote on college campuses. You couldn't vote by lane bullet. All that comes from the, the foundation was in 1965. <coughs> now, before the pastor turned to the session, said that 
blacks have the right to vote and, and choose on and choose on the South. So God, what that means is that they never gave up. So the, the, the 2013 decision decapitated the 1965. So now you have gerrymandering in place of just race. So in Virginia, we won about 200,000 votes. Yet to lose the Senate by flip of a coin. <coughs> Gerrymandering. Hillary beat Trump by three million votes. He's the president. Mm -hmm. We win 18, 19, 2018 by nine million votes. To lose the Senate. Yeah, those, those are unfaced mentions of the, of the struggle. All I'm saying, I said to some people the other day, the reparations, I said, don't, don't. Don't embarrass us by not having a high platform with little information. Uh, it, it may be in the position of the, if we're not able to the group, say we must deal, we must deal, repair, 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 repair. 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 <coughs> damage done. Yeah. And we got to do some digging there. Well, hey, man, hey, 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 get hung off. No, 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 no. Israel is reparation because what happened in the Holocaust. Yeah. It was protecting them the right to exist and make them secure. Germany, 50 years on, 2% government, 2% government secured for Marshall Plan, that was their reparation. Japanese Americans got their reparation. Well, formerly, I'm not sure yet, but the descendants, the descendants of slaves, have a claim. We, 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 we who are blessed to be literate, we have the most hard to find out what that is, what it means. The Italian folks came from in Mississippi, go back right down there. With the local archives start digging up numbers. Mm -hmm. you're, you're every, say every slave. Every yes. slave. Each of our ancestors. Yes. was counted. Yes. And their children. Yes. Was counted. Yes. They were taxed based upon that. Yes. So there's so, that, 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 no laws like people in this country. We've almost come to the close, and there's one other oh, yeah. question that we've got. Uh, why don't you share a little bit about your perspective on the mayoral election in Chicago? <laughs> Table, I'll consider it. Didn't say much. 
Well, let's just pass it to the <laughs> Well, look at the of the people's convention. I could have run, I had enough popularity and visibility. So Bamford Burke could have, Roland could have. But we all, we wanted to write it. We, it was about that, not about us. Yes. We, read, we, we chose, we chose a little, a little poll. We chose Harold. Harold say in Chicago, I'll tell you right now, it's not Jerry got to have a Seven months in the black vote. Six months on the Latino vote. Ten months in the late front whites. And have that kind of combination to win. That's scientific. But anybody didn't like doing something. So the, the success of the boycott for print all the voter registration drive. And I bet. So when Harold put about 50 out, we raised 40 out of the voters. They raised a million dollars. They paid God. Harold couldn't say no. He always had the ability. He didn't have the other thing because, and, and so we went for it. As a, as a press group on the lake at that time, was the name of the president of the lake. And uh, they, their models were their friend going on. You heard of the friend? The fifth of the lake, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, <coughs> out of that struggle, it's one thing how God moves in time and situations. Uh, when Harold did when he was so qualified, so able, there was daily and money. So he burned that money, Harold and Hammer's money. So I told people out there, but listen to what Bernie says about David. David says about Bernie. Leave both of them for Harold. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you get money from daily and Get as much money as you can. Get the money. <laughs> we knew, I knew we struck five when I was around six to in college and the bus came to the country and kids, hey, we're up to five, I'll come to five. No job, I'll come to five. He did it, 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 it hit the bottom. It, 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 the, the water hit the roots, you know. People were kind of coming about a lot of the same. He won the election. And the great Democratic Party, daily and all of the inheritors of the Democratic Party, on the third part, I called Chicago first. Yeah. For the man up for Harold with a, a plate in his head, they almost beat Harold. And then he heads up there. I mean, that, that's the background of what, what we are on now. So yeah. in, in, in the home, but give and take of these, here we are now, was uh, Lori Lightfoot and, uh, and her. 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 Both of her are qualified, very able. The things about uh, Lord, I admire, I admire very much. I don't think they'll run over her. Smart lawyer. Took my gate. And, and, and apologize about who she is or what she is. And she shouldn't have to. No thing. None of my enlightened people. We, 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 want, we want service, not sex.
mentioned uh, Dr. King's last speech, and I believe it was uh, also in this speech he talked about uh, the importance of Chicago and not working bread basket and the, the black businesses that uh, had raised a lot of money here in Chicago. What, do you, what would you say is specific about Chicago that allowed, has a, allowed the city to have that type of environment uh, where so much of the movement was going on down south? And do you think that that environment is still here in Christian today? We had uh, more black business in Chicago than almost any other place in the state because that meant the hell enough that was creativity. Yeah. Uh, we had daily news, the gun was a daily newspaper. Uh, Billy Ann was dedicated to Boston Negro at that time. That, 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 that. Um, and so, actually, Gilda Smith, the real contract was, 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 was another day at, at the Gilda Smith name on it. But we were in, we were in the business. That generation built CB Bank, Independence Bank, and the Lord Center Trust. This generation has more, more, more education and more degrees, and not in the suburbs, but on nothing. They <laughs> can't pay them taxes on them houses. I mean, they've almost produced nothing but it's for, the, for the new house. And, and leave, leave the parents' house to be put on the market. There's a lot to be said about that, seems to seem, seem. Uh, I would think that uh, what many people miss to life, life keeps changing. You don't catch up with it? I'm not very 